I'm Chris Chavis. I'm the head of the Transcranial Magnetic Stimulation Research Group at Cardiff University. And my research group focuses on an area of science called cognitive neuroscience, which is the interface between experimental psychology and brain imaging and classical neuroscience. And the aim of our research is really to understand how um, everyday behaviours, ranging from your sensory abilities such as vision and touch and hearing, all the way through to higher functions such as um, your reasoning abilities, your memory, um, and so on, how these processes are controlled in the human brain. So my background is originally in psychology, um, in particular uh, auditory psychology, so I studied hearing research during my PhD. But then I got increasingly interested in how um, these fundamental psychological systems are actually controlled in the brain itself. And from there, I started to get more and more involved in research studying the brain, and in particular uh, using this technique of transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS, which is a way of temporarily interfering with small parts of the brain in awake people whilst they do normal tasks, such as trying to detect a picture on a, on a computer screen or trying to remember a series of numbers. And we can do a demonstration later on. So we're sitting inside one of my research laboratories here at the Cardiff University Brain Research Imaging Centre, or Kubrick as it's known. Kubrick is part of the School of Psychology at Cardiff University. Uh, behind me you can see um, some equipment that we use um, in the laboratory. Um, on, on the screen here is an image of my brain scan, which has been acquired using a, an MRI scanner. And you can also see an eye tracker that we use on many of our experiments to um, determine where people are looking, uh, focusing on their gaze whilst they're doing an experiment. So transcranial magnetic stimulation is a technique that we use in neuroscience to temporarily activate parts of the brain safely in, in people. And this is an example of part of a, of a system that we use to stimulate the brain. This is a TMS coil. And inside this coil are a series of tightly interwoven copper windings wrapped in a figure of eight configuration. And during TMS, what we do is we pass a very strong current through this coil that current induces an electric current in the brain and can stimulate neurons directly beneath the coil. So we're about to do a demonstration of transcranial magnetic stimulation on me. And what you're about to see is the uh, TMS being applied to a part of my brain called the motor cortex. The motor cortex is the output stage of the brain. It's where all the different signals are sent to the different fingers and toes and muscles of your, of your limbs. And because we're stimulating my right motor cortex, the left side of my body should respond. And in particular, we've positioned the coil over the part of my right motor cortex that controls my left hand. So if you watch my left hand, and again, you can see that what's happening is that the activation is being induced in my right motor cortex the neurons are being, are being activated and stimulated, generating a, a wave of activity down the corticospinal pathway all the way down to my fingers. And again, that clicking sound that you can hear during the TMS is the sound of the copper windings inside the coil expanding and contracting rapidly. And one more time. You can imagine that this principle of, of TMS, this, this idea that you can activate parts of the brain and as you can see quite comfortably, can be applied to any brain region that we're interested in. It doesn't have to be the motor cortex, it could be areas in the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe or in the sensory cortex, which of course have a range of different functions. So we could interfere with language or with perception or with higher abilities. Let's put yeah. you in. If you don't mind. Yeah. Happy to go in? Yeah. Right. If you feel uncomfortable at any time, just tell me. <laughs> So one of 
the main techniques we use at Kubrick is called magnetic resonance imaging, which is a way of um, visualizing the structure and function of the brain and other parts of the body. And what we're standing in at the moment is the mock MRI scanner, which is a way of acclimatizing participants to the real scanner without actually exposing them to the potential safety risks um, of real MRI, such as the very strong magnetic field. Here you can see activations in a human brain acquired using a technique called functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI. And depending on the uh, color within these different patches here, it tells us the relative strength of that activation. So here, for example, in these regions here, we receive relatively strong activity compared to regions around the edges where there is less. In 1861, the famous French physician Paul Broca encountered a patient who he named Tan because the patient could say literally one word, which was Tan. Tan suffered a serious speech problem, and after his death, Broca performed an autopsy, and he found that Tan had an enormous lesion to a very specific part of his brain in the left hemisphere, which we now know is important for speech. And what we're going to do now is test, in me, whether that same brain region is important for speech. So now what we're going to do is we're going to apply TMS to my left inferior frontal gyrus, the area that was damaged in Tan's brain, and we're going to test whether disrupting that region interrupts my speech. Does that feel right? Yeah, it seems good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four. So one of the reasons I think that it's vitally important that neuroscientists like me uh, engage with the public is so that we can debunk neuromyths, such as that the left brain does one particular function and the right brain does another. A classic would be left brain is your emotional side of your brain and the, the right side of your brain is, is, is for space and, uh, and you know, other more mathematical abilities, for example. Most of these myths are indeed just that. They're not true. Um, even language, which is one of the most lateralized functions, we know is in fact bilaterally uh, represented in the brain. Another classic neuromyth is that we use 20% of our brain and that, you know, we're not maximizing our capacity in some way, and this is also untrue. As you listen to this, you are using 100% of your brain.